Breeders' Cup Saturday continues, and it's time for the granddaddy of them all, the Breeders' Cup Classic. You can check out my early look by clicking on the link above. Meanwhile, let's get down to the final selections and take a look at how I think this classic is going to unfold. 11 Horse Field start at the rail with Math Wizard. Math Wizard has ran 13 times. He's never cracked the 100 buyer speed figure number, and he is coming off a career top on a slow surface in Pennsylvania at Philadelphia Park. And I think Math Wizard maybe took advantage of a slow and demanding racetrack the last time, defeating War of Will and Mr. Money. He's going to have to run a new career best to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. I'm going to be siding to other horses. Meanwhile, Seeking the Soul won his way in on a win and you're in at Churchill Downs underneath the Twin Spires. But since then, he's kind of faltered a little bit. His last two races have been an eight-length loss in the Awesome Again and an 18-length loss in the Pacific Classic. He's going to have to also turn it around and get back to his best form, although he does have some buyer speed figures last year that does put him in the mix here. Owen Dell is a three-year-old facing older horses. I do like the four-wide trip in the Oklahoma Derby the last time. He made his move approaching the turn, and if he can get into position to be in the top three or four as they come around the turn, he may be one of the few into mischiefs that can possibly go 10 furlongs. Right now, I'm kind of on the fence. I like the fact that Javier Castellano rides. He usually comes up big in some of these 10 furlong races, and I think Owen Dale does have a shot. I think he's somebody you can use underneath. He is not going to be my top selection. War of Will is a horse that I think really seems to be thriving at Santa Anita. He does add blinkers, and he did seem to lose focus in the Pennsylvania Derby. Even though he's had some offsetting efforts since the Preakness Stakes, he's kind of been a, a tale of two trips on the year. He took advantage of the bias on the Preakness Day and then ran against the bias on the Jim Dandy and Belmont Day. I think he fits. I think he's 25 to 1. And again, if you really think McKinsey can't get 10 furlongs, it is possible War of Will opens up the lead as they come out of the stretch. Meanwhile, Yoshida offers five on the year, tries to pick up his first victory at 10 furlongs and also his first victory this year. I think Yoshida's got a big shot, picks up Mike Smith, and his best chance and his best race this year was when he ran second to McKenzie in the Whitney at nine furlongs. He laid back, let everybody else make their mid-race moves, and even though he's not really a mile and a quarter horse, I think he does have the biggest turn of foot if he can kind of wait until the turn and then kind of unleash on a few of these horses if the track is demanding. Yoshida is going to be my top selection here in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and I think he's going to get his first win of the year. Elate, two for six on the year, has lost a blue prize and Midnight Pursue three times. And I just don't think she can get 10 furlongs against the boys. Her last race, she just physically didn't look that well. Now she's got a ship and run out west on a new surface. And I just think Elate's up against it. And I think her price is too low. At 15 to 1, I'd take a shot with her. But at 7 to 1, I just think her price is not realistic with her chances of winning the race. Higher power still has to get back to that 107 buyer speed figure in the Pacific Classic. Broke a little bit slow the last time. He's capable of winning. But my biggest concern with higher power is he has the one race that sticks out and none of his other races really put him competitive in this race. That 107 puts him right there at the wire, but can he run that 107 and how do you handicap him to get back to that 107? Higher power is just going to have to beat me in the classic. Meanwhile, McKenzie, your favorite, two for six on the year. That's a little bit worrisome. He also ran a flat race, I thought, in the awesome again. He carries 126 pounds. He's never carried 126 pounds, and he's got to do it with a new jockey on in Joel Rosario, who's going to have to time this move perfect with McKenzie. With the loss the last time, you're getting a fair price. He's going to be 3-1 to one or 7-2, to two. and in his last five races, he's been either 7-5 to five or below, including under even money in four of his last five races. So McKenzie, off the loss, you're getting good value at 3-1 to one or 7-2. to two. The big question is, can he win at 10 furlongs with a new jockey against other grade one horses? Mongolian Groom upset the apple cart the last time. The son of Hightail has run in some grade one races, three straight grade ones. He seems to be getting a little bit better, and he's two for seven and coming off a nice win with a big gallop out the last race. He's got a shot. I think 15 to one is fair price. If you think he can repeat that awesome again effort, it puts him right here in the mix. Vino Rosso is another contender. He's my second selection. 
I love his two efforts at 10 furlongs this year. I like his recent workouts. And Todd Fletcher, 11 of his 13 horses in the Classic have ran out of the money. But Vino Rosso is lightly raced, only five races this year. He should be three for five. And the Carter was a seven furlong race. And the Stymie handicap was only a mile. Vino Rosso is fresh, fit, and a solid price at four to one, nine to two. He definitely can win this race. He's my second selection behind Yoshida. Code of Honor rounds out the field. He's got back-to-back -back wins at 10 furlongs. He's going to have to pass six or seven horses down the stretch while on a new surface, and it's hard to believe he's going to run three back-to-back mile-and-a-quarter races. If he does win this, I will give him my Horse of the Year vote. I will also give him the three-year-old of the year, and that would be quite an accomplishment for Code of Honor to finish out the year with three straight wins. Who do you like in the Breeders' Cup Classic? Leave a note below. Share and like this video. And remember, hit subscribe as we have videos of all 14 Breeders' Cup races. We'll also still have some uh, betting videos to come up here as we get closer to the pick fours and the pick fives. But hopefully you enjoy this Breeders' Cup Classic. Make sure to watch my preview video last week of the Breeders' Cup uh, Early Look and Deep Dive. And we've also got videos up for the Juvenile and the Distaff and the Mile and the Big Ass Fans Dirt Mile. That's a look at your Breeders' Cup Classic 2019.